Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to give you the best start possible in EVE Echoes. Now today we're going to be looking at one of the trainer cruisers, this time around the Minmatar Stabber Trainer. This was one of the ships you could get as a daily login reward as an Omega clone, with a choice between the Stabber, the Omen, the Caracal and the Vexor. Today we're going to look at fitting the Stabber Trainer, and if this is the kind of ship that you enjoy, we're going to look at how you'd progress from there in regards to alternative ships and the skills that you'd need to pilot them. Now if you enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Let me know in the comment section down below, or on social media, as you've seen along the bottom of your screen, what topics you want me to cover in future videos. And if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now. Alright, that's said and done, let's have a look at the Stabber. Now before we proceed, full disclosure, I'm not normally a cruiser pilot. For me, I tend to focus my skills personally onto frigates and the occasional destroyer, just because that's what I personally enjoy playing most. Cruisers are still a fantastic option in EVE Echoes. They are great for doing solo PvE content. If you're into ratting, this cruiser build that I'm about to show you now on its own can do tier 5, tier 6, and if you're careful, tier 7 anomalies. You might even be able to do tier 8 if you're very careful, but certainly I'd look to coming out the trainer into the full-on stabber, which we'll discuss later. What I'm saying here though is I don't have any skill points at all in anything relevant to cruisers. I don't have any medium cannon skills. I don't have anything in cruiser command, that kind of thing. So when we're looking at the stats and the abilities here on screen, it's like you coming from that fresh perspective of you're looking at cruisers and contemplating whether this might be something you're interested in. So I'm going to show you where to start and then we're going to talk about how to proceed from there. So of course, starting out here, let's actually have a look at the Stabber Trainer's stats itself. Now the first thing that should jump out to you is that here on the left hand side, you can see it's got a drone tube. Does that mean it's a drone ship? No, that's quite common in cruiser sized ships um, and above that they have drone tubes. This one can actually only launch small drones and the purpose for that ultimately is just in case a frigate or a destroyer happens to get a little bit too close to you, that your turrets struggle to track them. You've got something up close and personal that can help you handle that and that's literally all it is. Really don't focus on it. I'm not even going to mention it again in this video. Beyond that, we have the four high slots, two mid slots, three low slots, and then two of each of the rig types, power grids and mechanical. Now you'll notice that despite it being a tech level 5 ship, it can be insured for repairs, so if you happen to lose this in combat or get it destroyed, you can head back to the station and you can use your insurance vouchers to bring the hull back. Now let's have a look at the skill bonuses. If you have skills in medium cannon operation, you'll get an additional 5% accuracy fall off the medium cannons, and any skills in cruiser command will increase your flight velocity by 5%. Now already that should be looking fairly reminiscent to the Thrasher line of destroyers, and ultimately that's what the Stabber is. The Stabber is a cruiser sized variant of the Thrasher. This thing with those cannon accuracy fall off bonuses is designed for strike cannons, it's designed for hitting things at range and that flight velocity allows you to help maintain that range. So let's look at how to fit this thing. Now straight up here you'll see that in the top slots I've gone for four Mark V medium strike cannons. These as you look at them have a whopping accuracy and optimal range of 19.32 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of 17.5 kilometers. That means that these weapons whilst they're fairly low DPS without any form of skills in them I can be hitting people unskilled at 30 kilometers away quite comfortably. I can actually be hitting at 40, 50, even 60 kilometers away and still dealing good damage. That means that when you're in a PvE combat encounter, you can be moving away from the ships, you can basically be kiting with these cannons and pounding on them from afar. The downside to these though is that they do have a very large power grid requirement of 99 megawatts. Once you've got four of these fit to a stab a trainer, its poor little power grid is already pretty full. If we have a look at the bottom then, we don't have much room for low slots or mids, but in the low slots here I have of course gone for a Mark V medium afterburner, and a medium afterburner is vital here. If you try to put a small afterburner onto a cruiser, it won't really do much. It's like basically standing on the back of a ship and like puffing air out to try and speed yourself up. It's just not going to do anything. You do need a medium afterburner. 
The same here goes for the Mark V Medium Shield Booster that I've applied to this. Ultimately, that's there just to top up any incidental damage we take. You're looking here at, again, using a Medium. Using a small Shield Booster here is pointless. It uses the entire slot, and it's barely going to do anything. It's not going to touch your shields. Um, just not going to do a thing at all, so don't even bother. Use a Mark V Medium Shield Booster, or just don't. Now for the final slot, because I've got a little bit of space left, I had a Mark III Gyro Stabilizer kicking around. We've discussed Gyro Stabilizers in a previous video, but ultimately this just increases the damage of your, your cannons that teeny tiny little bit, and every bit of damage helps, right? That's our setup here. Now, ultimately, you could look at putting something into the mid slots, but the mid slots are designed for up close and personal, and the aim of this ship is to be flying away and kiting. You're trying to keep the, uh, the enemy ships at bay at as far distance as possible, basically at least 30 kilometers, and you're going to be wanting to shoot at them from there. Now, considering things like stasis webifiers, energy nosferatus, all that, tend to have fairly short ranges of between 5 and 10 kilometers, there's no point really fitting one. It just means that if you lose the ship, you've lost another module. Same with the drones. The drone control radius on the ship is usually only about 20 kilometers. By the time something comes in that range, you know, it, it's you're already going to be trying to take care of it. You shouldn't really be letting anything get that close. That said, if you want to put a drone in there, I'm not going to stop you. It is a useful tool. I just don't have any on hand and didn't really want to talk about them all that much here. In regards to rigs, again, because this is a trainer ship, I wouldn't worry about it. Keep this ship fairly cheap in cost. Go out, have fun with it, learn from it if you destroy it, rebuild it with the vouchers, go out and have another round. Now, at first glance, looking at that DPS stat there on the right, you might be forgiven for wondering what the point of upgrading from a stabber trainer to a stabber actually is, considering it's, what, a five-point DPS increase for a ship that costs considerably more and can't be insured. Well, ultimately, that's because we're not looking at the bigger picture here. First of all, we have a couple of different low slots that are going to change the game big time once I undock and actually show them in action. But also, again, I remind you, I do not have any relevant skills for this ship. I do not have any of the medium cannon skills or the cruiser command skills that actually up the bonuses. So if we look at the mainline stabbers stat page, you can see here straight away, medium cannon operation now gives us an additional 4% reduction to medium cannon activation time. That's not just the accuracy fall off anymore, so every point you have put into medium cannon operation is also, in addition to that fall off, going to be making your cannons fire faster. That is a flat DPS increase, and it is a big one. Once you have this at full uh, five levels in medium cannon operation, that's a 20% faster activation time on all of your medium strikes. That is huge. Anyway, as I said, the big thing, though, is once we undock this ship and we can actually see it, um, see some of the stats change due to the modules that we have that can be heated. Now, again, the power grid is a concern at this point because I don't have any cruiser, uh, cruiser engineering skills. I could rig for additional power grid using an ancillary power grid rig, but obviously I haven't done that for the purposes of this video. What we have got here in the low slot instead of a shield module this time, though, is a tracking computer. Now, what a tracking computer does is by having this fitted on your ship, all of the uh, all of the cannons that I have on here have an optimal range bonus of 14.12% and a fall off bonus of 14.12% as well. They also track at 9.88% faster. Now that itself doesn't sound like much, but it does really add up. That fall off bonus, once we actually have a look at it, if we look at it, see here on the ship itself, you can see that has now already shot up the optimal range to 22 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of damn close to 20. That means you're sitting at 50% effectiveness at 40 kilometers range, 42 kilometers in fact, and you're only actually hitting zero at 62 kilometers range. That's huge. That is a massive range, and that's with this ship running cold. If you activate the Mark V tracking computer, as you can see here, those bonuses get increased by an additional 500%, which means that that optimal range and fall-off bonus go through the roof, and you can deal some massive damage from a very long distance. The tracking speed bonus obviously gets increased as well, so if something does slip under your net and get right up close and personal, you can activate that, and hopefully your cannons will track that a little bit faster and be able to hit them. Now, with the little bit of space left I had in the two low slots, I've gone for a Mark III Gyro Stabilizer and a Mark V Gyro Stabilizer just to increase the DPS that teeny tiny bit. And of course, if you activate both of those, that is a massive boost to the damage that you can deal as well. Now, showing this on the stats page really doesn't do it justice, so it is important to me that I actually take this ship undocked and show you what happens when we heat those two modules with the Gyro Stabilizers and with the, uh, the, the, the tracking computer. 
Now that we're undocked and in space, I can actually showcase the differences that I'm talking about. So if we have a look at the actual Canon stats page, as I said, at this point in time, it's a 22.05 kilometer optimal range with a 19.97 accuracy fall off. Now, if I were to activate that tracking computer and then open that stat page again, you can now see that optimal range has increased to 33 kilometers with the accuracy fall off at 30. That means we're now at 100% at 33, we're at 50% at 63, and we can fire all the way up to 90 kilometers out. That is a humongous difference. Now, yeah, it only lasts for 20 seconds, but that's enough to get a couple of volleys off. And if your volleys are high enough damage, you can do some real pain to someone from a long distance as they are closing and approach, uh, closing towards you, approaching your ship. That's very useful in high tier combat anomalies, as ultimately what it means is that whilst those ships are coming towards you, you turn around, you fly away, while they're coming towards you, you can hit them from a massive distance, and as they get closer, that, ca uh, that computer comes off cooldown, you can start just using your, your cannons normally, then reactivate it and hit the next ship from a massive distance as well as it starts closing. The other thing, as I mentioned, is the gyro stabilizers. If we have a look at the statistics page before the gyro stabilizers are hot, it's 81.75 uh, DPS cold. If I activate both those gyro stabilizers and then open the fitting page again, that has jumped all the way to 120.96. Now, again, that is based on those gyro stabilizers being hot, and that only lasts for 20 seconds. But, again, that means you can activate those two gyro stabilizers and the tracking computer, and you can hit something for massive damage at a very long range as it's closing on you. By time it's, uh, if it survives that first blast, by time your tracking computer and the gyro stabilizer are onto the cooldown like you can see on screen now, that ship should be within your usual range anyway, at which point you're hitting it for your standard damage and you're hitting it comfortably within your usual range brackets. Then you finish that ship off whilst flying away from it, activate all those modules again and pound the next ship. That's ultimately what this build does, and trust me, it's great fun. I've done this in the uh, in the OBT and in the final test. Just obviously here in live, my skill points are a little bit more... Uh, they're a little bit rarer, and I have to really consider where I'm putting them. If you find that you're enjoying the Stabber Trainer enough to upgrade to a Stabber, then you might want to look at where you progress onwards from there, because that's not actually the end of the Stabber line. Once you hit tier 6, you gain access to the Stabber Fleet issue. Straight up, this gives you an extra high slot. This has five high slots, which is flat out an increase already just on the sheer DPS that this can kick out. You'll notice here, though, that the medium cannon activation time reduction has actually gone down from 4% to 3%. You might think, isn't that a bit of a nerf? Well, sort of, yes it is. But again, you've got that fifth cannon slot at the top there, and you've also trained all the way through basic medium cannon operation, and you're now training into advanced medium cannon operation. So you've already got all five levels of that under your belt as well, boosting up the ship's cannons. The same goes below here with Cruiser Command. This is now Advanced Cruiser Command, and it adds in the bonuses of Scan Resolution and Sensor Strength, which means that the ship can lock on quicker to smaller targets, which is always going to be useful for a cruiser. So once you hit Tier 6, and once you've got the uh, Medium Cannon Operation and Cruiser Command up to 5, that's when you'd look to upgrade to the Stabber Fleet issue as you begin training Advanced Cruiser Command and Advanced Medium Cannon Operation. But again, we'll talk about that more when it comes to skills. What we want to talk about though now is where do you go beyond this? Because yes, there is life after the Stabber in the Min Matar ship tree as well. If we come across to Tier 7 and into the Battle Cruisers, we can now look at one of my absolute favourite ships in New Eden, yet it's the one that I'm most least likely to fly, and that is the Hurricane. At Tier 7, you gain access to the Hurricane Prototype, which is a Battle Cruiser with a whopping 6 high slots that you can fit with Strike Cannons. You get a roll bonus here of medium cannon optimal range 25% and medium cannon accuracy fall off 25%. That means those already long range medium strike cannons are even longer range. This almost becomes a sniper ship in and of itself. Command burst module slots, don't worry about that. That's something we'll talk about in a future video when it actually comes to looking at the hurricane. But let's continue down. Advanced medium cannon upgrade, which of course you should be training if you're training medium cannon operation, gives you additional 3% medium cannon damage and a reduction of 3% to medium cannon activation time. Obviously 15% up and 15% down on those is a massive DPS increase on some already very powerful turrets. And again, battle cruiser command gives you 5% flight velocity. 
Then, if you do end up going with an Omega clone rather than sticking off as an Alpha, you gain access eventually to the Hurricane at Tier 8, which is the same thing, it's got an additional cannon, it's now at 7 high slots. Oh, where does it stop? With, again, more bonuses down here in the statistics. That still doesn't end there, and eventually you can come all the way up into battleships, but at battleships you're now using large rather than medium cannons, so we will stop there, I think, in regards to the Hurricane. That said, though, just before we stop talking about the Hurricane, um, I do love this ship. Look at how pretty that hull is. That's just such a cool-looking ship. I did actually fly one of these back in the final test in July. Um, if you do want to go and see what the Hurricane is all about, if that looks like it might be an interesting ship to you, go check that video out. I will put a link at the top of the screen now and in the description below for you to go and check out the Hurricane. Otherwise, let's go on and have a look at skills. Now, as with any other ship in Eve Echoes, obviously the skills that you want to train are the ones that are relevant to that ship. If you're looking at the ship's stats page, those are the skills that really you should be training first. I'd like to pause quickly and just say, we've just been talking about the Hurricane, and there it is on the, on, on the tree here. That's how popular the ship is and how awesome it is. Anyway, let's look at weapons. <laughs> Obviously, if you're flying a stabber and looking to upgrade from there, the first thing you're going to be wanting to train is, of course, medium cannon operation. Medium cannon operation as a skill increases the damage and the tracking speed of your cannons. You're going to want to get that to four as quickly as possible. With that at four, I would start adding medium cannon upgrade. Medium cannon upgrade gives you additional damage, accuracy fall off, and optimal range to those cannons as well. So we're talking about using this as a kiting build. Those stats just make that even longer range. And again, these do carry on to the hurricane if that's where you end up going. Once you've got both of those to four, I would then go across right back to the beginning to cruising technology and get cruiser command up to level four for that cruiser inertia modifier, flight velocity, and the bonuses to the ship. Then finally, take cruiser command and uh, medium cannon operation to five before taking the upgrade to five and then training up from there. Those are going to be the skills that you want to get access to quickest and foremost. Obviously, other relevant skills are going to be things like nav uh, under navigation, your afterburner. You're going to be wanting your afterburners to be nice and operable on those ships so you can keep that kiting up. Shield operation is, of course, useful for dealing with any incidental damage you take. And as you've seen, those strike cannons can be blasted power grid hungry. So cruiser engineering 100% is recommended as a side skill just for getting up that additional 25% power grid once it hits level 5. Well worth it just to fit those strike cannons on there so that you can kite from a distance. Anyway, folks, that really does cover everything that I wanted to say to you about the Stabber Trainer, the Stabber, and the Hurricane. Basically, where to go with medium cannons if you like the strike cannons, how to start with the Stabber, and how to finish with a Hurricane. <laughs> One of my favourite ships. I'm sorry, I, 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 I just can't stop talking about it. Anyway, folks, let me know what you think. Did you choose the Stabber Trainer as your ship? How are you finding it? What kind of build are you using for it? Have you given this one a go? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, as usual, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.